Hello golf fans, welcome back to another week of DFS PGA. I'm Chris Durrell, I'm here for Rotopros.com, bringing my weekly breakdown of the event. Uh, this week we've got the Genesis Open from Riviera Country Club. So we're going to do a couple things here this week. I'm going to go over my cheat sheet. I've got a new PGA salary trend out as well. I'm going to go over a little bit of stuff on Moosonomics on the Fantasy National Golf Club that uh, I didn't mention in my last video. Some, some useful stuff you're going to want to sign up uh, to use some of these tools that I'm going to go over as well as look at some of the weather and then just dive into some of the top picks for the week and we'll go from there. Before we get started, if you're not a Rotor Pros member, make sure to get over to www.rotopros.com, click the yellow sign up button top right hand corner and it's going to get you a 30 day free trial that gives you access to our first of all it gives you access to our community chat over it's a slack chat um, so we talk about all the sports we've got uh, analysts in there covering uh, nfl nhl nba pga soccer nascar daytona 500 comes this sunday mlb season starts in uh, in about a month it looks like uh, from now uh, getting into some of the preseason stuff so there's a lot going on at roto pros pretty sure you're not going to be disappointed you're going to stick with us for the long haul with that let's jump into the tournament so first, we're just going to have a look at my PGA sheet. Um, as you can see, I've got some guys highlighted. I'm going to talk about them here in a bit. First of all, I want to go over the course. Like I said, this is Riviera Country Club. It's a par 71, 7,322 yards. Um, this is the picture of the scorecard on my cheat sheet, so you can look at it there. Something else I like to use as well is the breakdown on FantasyNational.com. And when you get into that breakdown, you can look at the specific scorecard there as well. Um, you can look at the birdie rates, the eagle rates, that kind of stuff. First thing I always come and look at is I scroll down and look at the hole composition. As you can see, we've got six holes that fall between 450 and 500 yards. So we do have some long ones. This is a longer course when you're looking at the par 71 setup. And that shows as well over here in the approach shot distribution. As you can see, almost, well... Most of the, the approach shots that have come here at this course come in that 150 to 200 yard range. For the most part, what you're going to see is in purple and green here, these 125 to 150, 150 to 175. Those are going to be your longer hitters on tour that are going to be able to get the ball up there a little bit further. Some of the medium length to shorter hitters are going to have a lot of long uh, approach shots, 175 to 200 yards and 200 plus yards in some of those approach shots. So that's going to be very important uh, to be good with your long irons if you're not targeting the bombers. Now, the other narrative here is that the rough isn't too penal. Um, the fairways are thin, so you know you're probably looking at 50 to 55 percent uh, driving accuracy from the field this week. So that does give an advantage to the bombers, as if most guys are going to be in the rough anyway, it makes sense to definitely be farther down um, into the rough, giving you a smaller uh, club, possibly a wedge into the green. While others will be using uh, some longer irons there. Um, so the other narrative there when it comes to distance this week is the weather. We're going to jump into that here in a little bit. So, you know, if it's going to be soggy out there, definitely the distance comes in because uh, the shorter hitters are not going to be able to get that roll. Um, so the carry distance is going to be big this week. So definitely looking at Bombers. And you can tell looking at past leaderboards, and we'll go to look, do that here quick, last five years results. We've got Bubba Watson, Dustin Johnson, Bubba Watson, James Hahn, and Bubba Watson. <laughs> Got a lot of Dustin Johnson mixed in here as well. Um, as you can see, uh, Thomas Peters, um, when he made his trip here. So we've got a lot of long hitters near the top of the leaderboard. Although um, it is a t one of the tougher courses on tour, you do see that we have winning scores of minus 12, 17, 15, uh, 6. A, bit, a little bit of an outlier there in 2015. And then 2014, minus 15. So we're probably looking at that you know, minus 15 uh, winning score range, 12 to 17, somewhere in there. It looks like that's where it's probably going to fall here again. I don't think we're going to get down into the single digits this year. Um, so definitely looking at some birdie or better percentage stuff. And then outside of that breakdown, I also like to look at... Uh, um, driving accuracy greens and regulation so as you can see here and this is going to coincide with I'm going to show you here next greens and regulation greens and regulation percentage here uh, around 57 percent uh, versus the average tour event around 60 66 percent there so they're going to hit a lot fewer greens in the regulation here and the same goes for driving accuracy and that really coincides with what we see over at Future of Fantasy, the Golfinac. Um, this is a free site that you can go over and you can check out each and every week um, by going into the Golfinac, choosing the tournament. As you can see here, it shows you stint meter, uh, green sizes, uh, the, the level of difficulty to par when it comes to uh, um, scoring and stuff. So it's 0.75. Um, so it's definitely one of the harder courses. I think the average score, as you can see, is just a little bit above par. 
there so you can check out a few of the things there something i also like to look at uh when doing my research pre pre tournament kind of on that sunday maybe even the saturday before the tournament the next week is look at some of these quotes from players and that can really steer you in the right direction as to what stats um, you're going to be looking for that week so looking at the weather i like to use windfinder.com so i'll go up here i typed in santa monica um and then i kind of zoom in and as you can see as you zoom in here Taking just a minute here, let that come. As we scroll up here, we see Riviera Country Club here. So then I zoom out, find the closest weather station, which is the Santa Monica Pier. Click on that forecast there. I will include this link um, below in the comment section here as well, or actually in the description, so that you can get an up to date uh, come you know tonight when you want to look at that. So. As you can see today, they're going to be getting some rain throughout the day. Tomorrow, opening round, looks like we've got some rain throughout pretty much the entire day. We've got winds in the you know, 12 to 18 mile an hour range and gusts upwards of 30 miles an hour. So it looks like it's going to be a terrible day on Thursday. doesn't look like there's going to be any tea time advantage. Um, you know, most of the rain coming first thing in the morning, it looks like 0.75 inches of rain there. But it does continue on throughout the day. So I don't think there's a distinct advantage at this point if the weather sticks like that on Thursday. Friday, it calms down a little bit. A little bit of showers in the afternoon, no big deal. Uh, the winds do get up late in the afternoon, but that's kind of near... Uh, the end of that second round going into the cut so maybe you know if you're looking for guys looking for value play some of those guys that you maybe just want to sneak through the cut maybe avoid those guys that are going to be going out last on friday afternoon and then as we get into saturday it's a little more stable you know we got winds under 10 mile an hour so it's pretty calm there temperatures in the in the low to to high 60s so a lot of 50s weather there and then sunday we got some uh, as the round comes down we're going to get into some big winds getting down the closing stretch there so things could get interesting especially if you're betting outrights sweating the lineup on sunday be prepared this could be an interesting one here again this week so with that you know dig into the uh dig into the peach sheet, cheat sheet here a little bit um look at the salary trend i came up with this so this is going back to just the start of this season so the safeway open here in the fall it's got every player in every field and their salary for that week i've got DraftKings and FanDuel here and then each week I will be updating this plus minus from the last event. So you can kind of go and you can sort if you'd like. Go into this column B and if you sorted from lowest to highest, see the guys that uh, their salaries have dropped since their last tournament. So it's not just since last week, it's since that individual player's last tournament. Um, so you can kind of track, uh, you know, trending. Um, if you're going to be buying low or buying high on a player, you know, a player that's been playing good for three, four weeks straight, is he hitting his peak price? Or a player that's maybe struggled a little bit, fits the course, and has been trending down. We're going to talk about that as we get through some of these picks. So, right up the top, I'm going to go over my core players first, and then maybe touch on a few GPP plays. Um, so, first up for me this week is going to be uh, in the top tier. Um, we've got three players I'm really zoning in on. They're kind of near the bottom. Xander Shofley, Hideki Matsuyama, and Patrick Cantley. Um, Cantley comes in number one in my overall model. He finished fourth here last year. So that really stands out. So it's a small sample size when it comes to course history, but he did do very well here. Uh, California boy here. Um, now looking at his, we're just going to go over to fantasynational.com here. Look at Cantley. So as you can see over his last 24 rounds, he's third in ball striking. He struggled around the green. It's a short game. Struggled with putting. Fifth in approaches, 28th in DraftKings scoring. So a lot of that putting has to do with why he's down in 28th in DraftKings scoring. But looking at his overall player card, He's seen some some high ownership, so we're hoping that ownership maybe comes down here a little bit this week. He isn't as good on, on POA as you can see, but he is good here. And as you can see, when he gets his approaches on, um, gaining a ton of strokes on approaches, he's got a lot of upside. 7th, 2nd, 5th, ninth before that miscut. So hopefully that miscut helps bring his ownership down a little bit. I just think in that price range with his course history and how consistent of a player he is, especially when it comes to making cuts, getting top 10s, top 20s, that he makes an excellent cash play at 9,000, 10-8 on FanDuel. Hideki Matsuyama, right now he is number one tag on Fanshare Sports. Uh, makes a ton of sense. He's coming off a third place finish, 15th place finish his last two tournaments. He did miss the cut here in 2017, but finished 11th, 4th, and 23rd, as you can see, in the three years prior to that. So he's got a lot of course history here. Third in strokes gain approach, 
when it comes to my sheet. And then looking at the last 24 rounds there as well, you got Matsuyama. He's number one in approaches over the last 24 rounds. So definitely looking at him, number one in ball striking there as well. So he makes a ton of sense at 9,300. Another guy um, I will consider in cash games pretty much in all formats because he does have that winning upside there as well. And then Xander Schofley, um, probably one of my favorites of these three players, number three in my overall model this week. He finished ninth here last year, so he, he had a top ten, similar to Cantley in his first first trip here. He comes in with some excellent form. Um, we'll just look at that here quick. Schofley, over his last 24 rounds, you can see he has been very good pretty much across the board, like 66 and strokes gain off the tee. That is... Um, his worst stat in the last 24 rounds when looking at the strokes gain stats, 10th in approach, 1st in putting, 5th in DraftKings scoring. So that's definitely good there as well. And then looking at his individual card, the form is just great. 10th, 25th, he's got two wins on the season already at the WGC HSBC and the Tournament of Champions. Um, he finished 8th at the Hero, that's a small, um, it's a non-PGA Tour event, but he did finish top 10. There are some big names in that field as well. And just looking at his card, he doesn't miss a lot of cuts. Uh, he missed uh, three or four here back last year back, uh, in June, late May and June. But other than that, he doesn't miss a lot of cuts, and he's got a ton of upside. So the price just seems to be right for him. I would consider any of those three players in cash games this week. Now something else with before we move on to the mid-tier and some GPP plays, Spanish National Golf Club, something that they introduced here not too long ago, so what we're looking at here is this is their rank among the field in these stat categories over the last 24 rounds. And you can go and you can go last 4, 8, 12, 24, whatever, um, you know, however many rounds you want to look at it. You can sort it by course. We've got all these filters down the side. Um, I definitely like looking at the last 24 rounds, which for most players is about uh, 6 events, 5, 6 events, depending if they missed a cut in there or not. So you can look at the rank. I like the new option that they had, rounds gain percentage. So just for instance, let's look at Hideki Matsuyama, strokes gained approach. So 83.3% of his rounds over the last 24, he has gained strokes on the field on the approach. So that's kind of what that means. It's kind of looking at it from a consistency standpoint. Um, just to, another way to look at it when, when doing your research and trying to find players. So definitely check that out. From a GPP standpoint this week, Something I am looking at, um, Justin Thomas up top. I think a lot of people are going to be tending, you know, especially for cash games, maybe some for GPP builds. Looking at this, you can build a really nice balanced lineup with a lot of guys in this area. So I think maybe um, the overlooked GPP contrarian approach this week is maybe paying up for, for a big name player. Justin Thomas uh, jumps off the page to me this week. You know, he struggled here from 2015 to 2017, finally broke through with the top 10 last year. We know he's got winning upside. He's an elite player. He stands out in almost every area. Not worried about his, you know, a little bit of accuracy off the tee issues um, because that's not really going to matter here. He's going to bomb it down there. He's number one in strokes gain approach on my sheet, number one in proximity on my sheet, sixth in par four scoring. You know, he's top four in all the proximities, short all the way up to 200+. plus. He is second in birdie, birdie or better percentage, but he's also 11th in bogey avoidance as well. So just a really solid play, tons of upside. He's had success here, and I believe he is third or fourth in the field in DraftKings scoring over the last five events. So definitely looking at him. John Rahm, I think, could be overlooked as well. He's 26th in my model. That's just because he doesn't have any course history data. So, you know, if we were to fill that in a little bit, um, he'd probably jump up inside the top 10 or maybe just outside. He comes in with excellent form. He's got four straight top 10s on tour. His approach is... He's really excellent off the tee, gains a lot of strokes off the tee. Maybe not as good on the approach, but he's still 33rd in my sheet. Scrolling over, he's 5th in par 4 scoring. He's ninth in birdie or better percentage, 13th in bogey avoidance. So those are two guys I'm looking at uh, kind of from a bomber uh, GPP standpoint when making some GPP builds this week. I'll have some Justin Thomas and John Rahm there as well. Bubba Watson, I maybe didn't mention him in this top tier, but he kind of falls into that funny range for me. He's going to be very popular. He's won here three times in the last five events. I don't feel we need to pay up for him at cash games at 9700 on DraftKings because we do have Schofle, Matsuyama, Cantley. I'm uh, going to talk about Kutcher here shortly. I like those guys a little bit better when making my when making my builds when it comes to cash games. They kind of check all the boxes, not just the course history. They all got form, and they fit the stats model there as well. And then when it comes to GPPs, I just don't like going the Bubba Watson route because I feel he's going to be a little bit higher owned, and I think it's maybe worth fading him um, 
because if if you're going to be using him in GPPs, you know, you're probably going to want about 40-50% um, exposure um, to have more than the field. Even, you know, that 40%, 35 to 40% is enough. And I think, depending on how many lineups you're going to do, I'm only doing about 20 this week, um, 15 to 20. So I'm not going to have any Bubba. I'm going to go up to Rom and Thomas, and then I'm going to ha- just stick with my core that's down below. If you're looking for a really low-owned player, if you're making a lot of lineups, or, you know, even if you're just doing 20, you want to put, throw him in one or two, Jordan Spieth stands out to me. He's going to be low-owned. His form isn't great. He hasn't had a top 10 in a while. He has had success here, though. Um, T9 last year, 22nd the year before, and then he had a 4th in 2015, 12th in 2014. So he's had a ton of success here. I think he's going to be low-owned. Um, so that's kind of the angle there. I don't really like how he's playing right now. He's having those blow-up holes. Kind of cost me last week. I used him in one and done, but uh, we won't go there. Um, but, yeah, I think he's going to be low-owned, and I think that can be a nice uh, pivot play off a lot of these chalk plays. Hopefully Matsuyama can't lay right in that low 9K range on DraftKings. Moving on to the mid-tier. First guy that stands out, we got Matt Kutcher. Um, he's had three straight finishes of 26 or better here, top 10 in 2016. Comes in with excellent form, as you can see. Um, he's already won twice this year. We'll just punch him in. 33rd in, in ball striking, um, 16th in approach, 22nd in putting. So he's just playing really good um, across the board. And we're going to look at par 4 scoring here as well. And as you can see with the par 4 scoring, he's 4th in strokes gained par 4, but more importantly, he's 18th in that 450 to 500 yard range. So he is really good in that range. And at a sub K, um, sub 9K price tag, as you can see, his price came down 1500 bucks from Pebble Beach last week on DraftKings and 1100 on FanDuel. So just seeing that price come down, he's a solid player. He's one of the most consistent players on tour when it comes to making cuts. He's shown us upside this year with two wins, and he's had success here. He checks all the boxes for me. He's definitely going to be in my core at 8,500 on DraftKings, 10-3 on FanDuel. Cam Smith's next up, uh, right there, same price range, 8,400 on DraftKings, 10-4 on FanDuel. Finished sixth here last year, 28th year before. Um, he comes in with good form. He's gotten better here every single year and topped out with a T6 here last year. Not great off the tee. Not really worried about that too much. He's sixth in strokes gain approach on my sheet. 23rd in proximity. Um, kind of struggles in that 150 to 175 range, but as you can see, as the as the shots get longer, he's been better. He's 12th and from 200 plus. Really short uh, wedges, which we're not really looking at too much this week. He's good there. 14th in par four scoring. 16th in birdie or better percentage. Down a little bit in bogey avoidance, so the safety kind of goes away a little bit, but that's still inside the top 70, so I'm, I'm definitely considering using him in all formats as well, depending on my builds here. Next up, we've got Adam Hadwin, 7,800. He showed up as well on the salary sheet, $900. He came down $900 from last week on DraftKings. On FanDuel, he's down $600, so that stands out to me. He's been playing really well. We're just going to go take a look at if I can spell his name right fifth in strokes gained total over the last five rounds ninth in short game 41st in ball striking so he's dipped a little bit in his approach so that's maybe a little bit concerning there um, seventh in putting so we're going to look at him from the par four he's top 50 in par four from 450 to 500 yards so the upside is maybe a little bit down just because the approach shots have been trending in the wrong direction he's 11th in my overall model and I think at 7,800 in that sub 8K range there, I think he makes sense when it comes to cash game plays. Um, finished sixth here last year, as you can see, he has excellent course history, T34, T16, T22. He's made the cut here with three top 25s uh, in his four events. He's coming in with form. He's making a ton of cuts. He's got. He's really good off the tee. So like I said, he struggles a little bit with the approach shot recently. But his proximity is there. He's top 20 in overall proximity. As you can see, he's 32nd in proximity to 200 plus, 33rd from 150 to 175. Kind of struggles in that 175 to 200. Now, that could be a little bit of sample size issue there because it just seems funny that he's top 35 in the two distances around him. But overall, 17th in overall proximity I like there. And he's got course history. He's got form. So definitely looking at him. He's top 40 in both bogey avoidance and birdie or better percentage um for gpps i definitely like um going back to cameron champ he has struggled lately as you you will see here soon he you know he won earlier this season showed a ton of upside and then 
Kind of fell into some hard times here recently. His around the green play has really struggled. As you can see, he's lost strokes around the green. Not really worried about that this week. What I do like to see is that he has, um, after three straight weeks of losing strokes on the approach, he's gained strokes on the approach the last two weeks, including two strokes last week, seven strokes um, total, finished with the T30. So that's definitely good. He's got a ton of upside. He's got the bomber. Um, you know, he's a bomber, so he'll be able to get that down there as well. His price is dropping. Um, what else stands out here? He did miss the cut here last year, so I'm hoping that kind of that with some some recent form issues maybe as him a little bit lower on, maybe in that eight to ten percent range when it comes to GPPs and a mid seven K range. That's perfect for a guy with his upside. So definitely we'll be taking um getting some exposure to him in my lines for GPP builds this week. Getting back on Jason Kokrak this week, he withdrew last week along with about 20, 25 other players. So I'm not really too concerned there. There was nothing, just said undisclosed, there's nothing really, I don't think anyone really wanted to be there for the Pebble Beach crappy weather and the seven to eight hour rounds. So that's kind of what I'm you know, attributing that to because boom, he was right uh, Friday afternoon introduced in the field for this event. So not too concerned there. He's coming in with three straight top 20s. So the form is there, and he's also coming back to Riviera, where he's got three straight finishes of 22nd or better, including a runner-up in 2016. So he kind of covers that angle as well. And then uh, jumping over and looking at some of his stats, 22nd in strokes gain off the tee, 17th in strokes gain approach. So that really stands out there as well. Um, 16th in driving distance. And then we've got, uh, you know, he's pretty good when it comes to his proximity with his long irons. 175 to 200 and the 150 to 175 are probably his range with his distance. He's 28th and 4th there. 14th in par 4 score and 15th in birdie or better percentage. So not only does does he give us a little bit of safety um, at 7,600 at that price range um, with his recent form and course history, but with his stats, it also shows he's got a ton of upside there as well. So I think he can definitely pay off his price this week and even exceed. So I think a top 20 really is all we need. You know, if you're playing him in cash games, the top 20 is excellent at 7,600. I think he can do better than that. I think he's got top 10 potential there as well. 7,400, Sung Kang stands out for me. Uh, the first thing that jumped off the page were his odds to win are much better than about four or five guys above him and almost everyone below him there as well at 7,400. He comes back with excellent course history. T16, T22, T8 in his last three years. Comes in with some form as well with three top 20s in his last three events. And then from the stats, uh, we'll just go over here. We'll have a look at uh, him. So he's 65th in strokes game ball striking. A lot of that has to do with his struggles off the tee. Um, he's been he's been not accurate. Now something else I want to look at here after that. 22nd in approach. But going back to his strokes gain off the tee, we're going to go and we're going to click on fairways greens here. And we're going to bring up Sun Kang again. So as you can see, he's 122nd in the last 24 rounds among this field in fairways gained. 122nd in good drives gained. But what I like there is that he's getting his distance, 64th in driving distance. And his sand saves and scrambling. So he's missing fairways. He's not, I, I guess, greens and regulation gained to 70. Um, so he's not hitting a ton of greens there um, when he's missing the fairway. But he is scrambling really well, um, like tops of the field kind of scrambling. So definitely looking at him this week. Go look at his price. It's up 400 on DraftKings. Um, it's up on FanDuel, I believe, as well. Yeah, up 700 on FanDuel. So it's starting to go up at that mid-7K range, um, sub-9K range on FanDuel. I definitely like with his course history, with his form, and some of his recent stats there as well. If you need to go down that low, and I don't think we need to this week, I definitely trust him in cash games there as well. So going into uh, the lower range here, some value plays I like. JT post on stands out to me first of all it's going to be from a gpp one first glance i was like oh he makes a perfect cash game he finished his only trip here he finished t t17 in 2017 he's coming in with four straight made cuts pretty solid across the board when it comes to stats for a guy in his price range now you start looking at it a little bit closer um it's a little bit scary when it comes in we're just going to go over to the actual uh strokes gained stats and look at him there see as you can see here's ball striking is is a hundredth 94th in strokes gain t degree and 104th in strokes gain approach so 32nd in putting so he's putting really really well right now he's running as you can see sub two percent ownership each and every week so he makes a great gpp play to me this week 
So as you can see here, when he's off the tee, his ball striking is off. He's putting really, really well, and that's helping him make cuts. That's helping him get, uh, as you can see, Desert Classic. He finished top 10. He gained four and a half strokes putting. Um, even when his ball striking was just not really that great at all, he was putting really good. Um, so he's someone I will look at for GPP formats. I don't quite trust him going down there um, for cash games. And then Harold Varner. Harold Varner stands out um, just because of his upside for GPPs. He's got he's got the bomber thing going for him. Um, nothing else really stands out, you know, when looking at the sheet. Besides, he's got top 20 finishes. He's got uh, four top 25s in his last five events. Hasn't really done great here, 26th and 2016. But a guy at 7,000, you know, a top 20, I think, is good for him. And I think that makes a lot of sense because looking at, um, you know, some of his DraftKings scoring stats and stuff like that, We'll go jump in here. Yeah, we're not even too scary here. Top 15 strokes game, ball strike, and the approach shots are down a little bit, um, but DraftKings scoring is way up. So he makes a ton of birdies, but he also makes bogeys. So he's, you know, he's not going to have that winning upside, top 10 upside, I don't think. But he does, you know, like I said, a top 20 with, say, 15 to 20 birdies. Maybe he's going to finish uh, with a top 20, but he's going to be top 15 in DraftKings scoring. Makes a lot of sense for GPP at that, uh, you know, if you're looking for a cheap guy at 7,000. And then a little bit cheaper, um, even more GPP style for me is Brandon Harkins. He finished 41st here last year, not too bad. He comes in with two straight top 30s. And despite last week, you know, he was really up and down when it came to his rounds. But what stood out to me is that even with his finish of a T28, he was 15th in DraftKings scoring with 83 DraftKings points. So he's another guy that's going to make some bogeys. Um, he's not really consistent out there, but he's going to make a ton of birdies there as well. They'll come in stretches. He'll make some eagles there as well. So a top 20 for either Varner or Harkins that kind of seems similar Similarly, the same player, whereas they're going to make a lot of bogeys, but they are going to make birdies. And uh, if they can make the cut, I think they can make enough birdies to make it worth a uh, GPP spot in your roster. So that covers all my plays here for this week. I didn't go super in-depth with them. If you have any questions about any of these players, definitely hit me up in the Roto Pros community chat. I'm pretty much in there until lock now, um, all day today, even tomorrow morning there as well. So hit me up there on Twitter, at Jaeger underscore Bombs9. Uh, don't forget to jump over and get your 30-day free trial. And like I mentioned here, get over to um, the Musonomics Fantasy National Golf Club, sign up, get get in there check it all out everything i've covered i'm going to try and add a little piece each and every week um, when i go over stuff here just to give you some new options that they do have it's an absolutely amazing tool and worth every single penny if you're playing dfs pga thanks for watching the video let's go make some lineups and see some green screens this week good luck everyone